And the only thing, <coughs> oh yes, oh, I, yeah, that's right, you had a question. When you were speaking of rhythm, and I'm wondering about sort of your self-awareness, can you tell us what your rhythm is, or what the, you know, elements of it, or? You see what I'm trying to say? Like, I don't know. Yeah, so I was trying to say, what are my good partners? What I don't know. know. All I know is that copy editors continually break your rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going, you know, you're going, ba da 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 and they go, boom, <laughs> dun, dun. And I'm like, no, don't you get it? Don't you get it? No, no, no. Leave it as it is. It's an extra word. <laughs> okay, so so in a way, it's almost it's like it's like the scout's magic, where you've got this um, aura that you create when you're writing. Yes, yes, and you do it naturally. You can't help it. Okay. If you let it just be, if you let it be, and you don't try. Um, this is another subject we could go off on. Yes. Okay. And you don't. Let me get to her question, and then, okay. then I'll go off to the sense again, because it's a whole different thing. But it's also part of your voice. So, yes. Okay, in trying to understand this concept of the rhythm that you're talking about, are we talking as part of the pace? Are we talking as part of the cadence of the you know, your words? Do they flow? Yes. Is it kind of a blend of all these elements we're talking about and how they mm -hmm. move together? Yes, okay. it's all that. It's all that and more. Okay? It is. It's the way you say it. It's the da 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 You know? And it's not like a mesmerizing thing. It's not like you're going to go, oh, da 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 No. The only way I know to describe it is you putting yourself into that story. And you write it as you live it. And that rhythm, that you, that your self-determinism in that, do you know what that word means, self-determinism? Yeah. You are not influenced by some other thing out here, okay? Self-determinism means that you are determining the, the way you are going, okay? You do it, not, not some thing from the past, not something from the future, not someone over here, not someone over there. You consciously are directing something. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's all that. It is all that. The only thing way I know you have to say it is you have to pour yourself into it. Some people say pour your heart into it. I'm not so sure I understand that. <laughs> the way that I can only communicate it is to Pour yourself into it and don't hold back. I don't care what your viewpoint is. <laughs> you know, don't hold it back. If you believe it and you firmly believe it, write about it. Yeah? Uh, I think a lot of that too is just it's something that needs to be natural. Because you know, mm -hmm. you know, she she writes exactly how her personality is, that's how it comes through in the pages of the book, even though she's writing in 18 or 19. Um, it, it just comes through, her personality comes through, and she, that voice is there, but it's not intentional. She's not She's not thinking, okay, now I need to be witty. It just is. Right, you're it's not like, it's You're not writing not like some book that you just read. Right, it's, yeah. and, it's, and it's, 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 it's a delicate balance between overthinking it and wanting to have that or just being yourself and writing. It's true. And I'll, I'll tell you another thing that I found um, that I find very important. J just one, one thing. Mm -hmm. That's it. I only have three minutes left. <laughs> we're going to have to get to that. Let me try to remember what that was. What were we talking about? That one thing about. Um, it was this voice. In this voice, but I'm going to have to. We're going to have to go back and remember because there's a very important point about voice. I probably should have said it, you know. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Um, I'm kind of off track. There's one other thing that I wanted to to talk about here. Um, okay. If you want to write a series, all right. Remember, I was talking about that problem that you established right in the beginning of that first book. Okay. If you write a series. You don't solve that problem until the end of the series. Okay. 
you can solve the minor little problems of that book. You can solve the major problem of that book. But whatever that big problem that's in the series may not be uh, may not be solved until the very end of that series. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then there's a lot of different things. That goes, unless you're writing a series, like I did a series once, and it was the Legendary Warrior series. Every book was different. Every book, they weren't related in any way. The only, only thing they were related by was they were all based on real Native American legends. Okay, that, that was the only thing that was a continuous theme in them. Then I have the Lost Clan series, a series of four books. That established a problem right in the beginning that wasn't solved, and I had no idea how it was going to be solved until the end of the book. I, until I was writing that book, from the very end of it, I had no idea. I ran into another writer, and she said, well, how are you going to resolve this problem? And I said, hmm. <laughs> She said, you don't know. That would drive me crazy. She writes for TV. And I said, well, you know, the characters will figure it out one way or another, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but, oh, that's the other thing, self-determinism. Really important thing to, to talk about, um, and maybe in the afternoon lecture. I know we're talking about something else, but we can talk about that because it's so important. And each person does it differently. Each person does it differently. I do it differently, say, than um, some other writers. Some writers like to control their characters, like um, if they start going off a very uh, a path, they pull them right back. You know. And I don't write like that. You know, if, if the characters go off and they do this and they do that and I don't understand, they're doing this and that and the other thing, I sort of go, great. <laughs> All right, why are you guys doing this? And then I have to go in and fill in the pieces so it makes sense as to why they did it. Um, but anyway, we can we can uh, work on that in the next series. Am I am I done? <laughs> oh yes. Any other questions? I'm, I'm just trying to remember that thought you had. So, <laughs> I did feel like, oh, she's going to say something. Yes, <laughs> there was. What were you talking about? Well, I was asking about how conscious you are of your own voice and the rhythm. And you were saying, not really. You know, not at all. It just kind of flows out. Not at all. All I know is that copy editors um, disturb it. So then I was wondering, sort of like, um, if you observe anything that you do in the first couple pages, where to, to get the reader, you, you use the verb mesmerize, and I thought, well, that would help. You mesmerize them on page one. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 don't don't want, you don't want your, you, you really don't want your reader mesmerized Not because completely. then they're going on something else from yeah. somewhere else. Hypnotism, you know, you don't want that. You want them in your story. Sure. You know, story. often I will go back. I will write a book, and the very last thing that I write is the beginning. You know, because after I finish the book, I go back and I go, oh, that beginning stinks. <laughs> you know, that's the way that I finally handled um, my editor's objections at Avon, was I would write the book and then I'd go back and I'd re rewrite the beginning. <laughs> A good a good example is, if, uh, do you have like two authors, like one, the moment you, you pick up the book, you really like the writing, like you can get right into the story, and it's usually your favorite author that you buy the moment it hits the stores. And then there's a, another author that's very similar in style or like the same subject, but you just can't get into it, you know, and, and yeah. you don't want to pick it up. Or some of them you kind of like after you read the first 50 pages. That's yeah. usually voice. Now, you know, the thing about it is, is that we have all gotten impatient on, on, on this thing, to this and I'll leave. We've all gotten impatient. <laughs> I used to love a story that would start out Slow. And you just build up and you build up and it's slow and then, you know, maybe chapter five you go, wow. And then the book, you know, I love that. It's meant to that. Anyway. <laughs>